come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall with a question. How many of us, in small or great degree, live a fantasy life? I don't mean lost souls in asylums who believe they're Napoleon or a poached egg. I'm talking about all of you listening to my words, answering, if you're honest, my question. Confess, aren't there those unhappy bruising times when you slam a door on reality and take refuge in a place that never was? There you are safe, you think, are you? Have you asked yourself what dangers may lurk in that never-never land? None, you answer. You can return to reality whenever you wish. But can you? Our mystery drama, Catch a Falling Star, was especially written for the Mystery Theater by Nancy Moore and stars Carol Titel. it happened, this odd story I want to tell you, Miss Mamie was in her late 70s. They say when she was young, she had been pretty. And she still was. With the especially clear blue eyes old people sometimes have, confiding and artless, like a child's. Hitched with twisted hairpins to the screen door of her little gray house was a homemade sign which said, Miss Mamie Mopin, seamstress. She wasn't a very good seamstress, but most of the women in that small town near Philadelphia went to her for simple alterations because, well, let Grace Browning tell you why. Grace knows this story best. She lived it. The real reason most of us went to Miss Mamie is a little embarrassing. Standing in our slips in her cluttered Victorian parlor, we stopped being perfectly ordinary housewives. We became exciting celebrities because that's what we were in Miss Mamie's dim eyes. She made up thrilling stories about what had happened in those dresses we had brought. Any old dress, plain, out of style. And about those of us who wore them. In her mind, she had worn them too. Lived a romantic life she had never known herself. She'd go on and on. Now, what did we do in this dress? Did we wear it to the theater in New York? Yes, we did. How people admired us. How they turned to look when we walked in. We never contradicted Miss Mamie. It wouldn't have done any good if we had. She believed what she wanted to believe. It's true she wasn't a very good seamstress, but she did have magic in her hands. Her front yard, enclosed by an unpainted picket fence, was a glory of flowers. Her gift for raising them went beyond just a green thumb. But she was odd about her garden, too. I never, never pick my flowers. It's wicked and cruel. It hurts them. Then came that late spring day when all the trouble started. It began when David, my husband, he's an artist, rang Miss Mamie's old-fashioned doorbell. Miss Mamie. <sighs> all right, Miss Mamie, I'm coming in. Now, don't be alarmed when you see a man. David opened the rusty screen door, walked a few steps down the dark hall and stopped at an arched double doorway. Miss Mamie was there, in her cluttered parlor, scraps of material and unfinished clothes jumbled everywhere. She sat by a window, sewing. Miss Mamie? Oh! Good morning. Oh, goodness. I, I, I didn't hear the bell again. You said it was all right if I walked in. Oh, yes, yes, but I should know when you're at the door, Mr. Browning. I should feel Oh, it. no matter. Now, I'll just set up my easel and get started. You keep right on sewing. And uh, thank you again for letting me leave my paraphernalia here. I like your painting things there in the corner. They're company. But the reason I don't sense that you're at the door is because sometimes I think I made you up. I say, 
Now, Mamie, no artist is painting your picture. Why would Mr. Browning... Uh, would you tell me again why you want to paint me? I like what I see in your face. I think maybe what I see is undiluted happiness or true innocence. Lord, I don't know. And and will my picture truly go to... Oh, t tell me again about that. It will hang in an art gallery. Are you sure? Oh, remember what I told you? Right after my daughter's wedding, I'm having a one-man show. An exhibition. Oh, I'm going to New York. I'm going to New York. And all the people will see me. <laughs> well, not unless I get this portrait finished. Now... Will you begin sewing, please? Oh, dear. I, I haven't asked how Mrs. Browning and Miss Halley are. Oh, they're just fine, thank you. They must be so excited over Miss Halley's wedding plans. Mm. Oh, a wedding? Just think. Uh, Halley told me to ask you again to come to the wedding. Oh, no. No, no. Well, no. I know you never go anywhere, Miss Mamie, but you love pretty things. Is there anything prettier than a wedding? Oh, no, no. I, 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 I couldn't. No, thank you, kindly. I, I, I couldn't. All right, all right, all right. Would you uh, turn just a little to the left, please? Is is Miss Halley marrying a nice young man? Hmm. I, I forget his name. Uh, Jerry Wallace. Once, I was engaged to a nice young man. His name was Martin. Martin. Uh, hold, hold that look, Miss Mamie. Ho hold it, please. His name was Martin. Soon after David came home that morning, I was parading back and forth in the living room, modeling a summer dress, a, an out-of-style chiffon number I wanted David and Hallie to make up my mind about. Was it or wasn't it worth altering? Mother, are you sure you didn't get that at a garage sale? Or out of the ark? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how fashion designers do it. Make us look out of date every single year. How was the sitting? Oh, same as always. Miss Mamie asked the same questions, made up the same little yarns about... Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Today she had a new one. Asked about Hallie's young man, and then said once she had a young man herself named... Martin. Oh, poor old thing. Oh, dear. Wedding talk. So she steps into Hallie's shoes. Oh. Miss Mamie never had a bow in her life. Since she was 15, she's had to take in sewing, and she was a recluse even then. Afraid of the real world as far back as that. Well, just the same. She's not a poor old thing, Hallie. Not really. Maybe she never had any romance of her own, but you can't say she doesn't stitch romance in everything she makes. But, Daddy, she never goes anywhere. She never has. All she does is sow and grow flowers. What kind of life is that? Well, she lives in a fantasy world. It's much better than any real world could ever be. And sits there and weaves pretty stories about her customers. D David, did you ask her again to come to the wedding? Mm-hmm. It's no use. She's afraid of the real world. Well, I'm glad I'm not. It's a lovely world. Daddy, when you give me away, I want you to sound terribly dignified and impressive. How did you think I'd sound? Who give her this woman? I do, David D. Browning, a sometime artist, full-time father. And come to think of it, Reverend Sir, I'm not so sure I'll give my only daughter to this young upstart. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> oh, perfect. It's adorable. And you will, too, give me away, you stingy old thing. You've had me around for 19 years. Well, you two fight it out. I'm going to Miss Mamie's. Did we wear this dress when we went to Europe, Mrs. Browning? Why, yes, we did, Miss Mamie. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. We went to London and uh, and Rome and Paris. We, we, we did, didn't we? Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, my, I do hate fitting. Are you almost finished? Uh, Martin and I were going to Paris on a honeymoon. But you didn't... Uh, you, you can take the dress off now, Mrs. Browning. Oh, good. Oh, only I can't fix it till next week. I haven't time. Not time for anything. I'm graduating. 
You're what? Graduating. I'm making a sweet, sweet dress, and I can't touch anything else till I've graduated. When I cross the stage for my diploma, people will clap, and I will bow and smile before I go back to my seat. Oh, wait, wait. I I I'll show you my graduation dress. It's right here. Here. Look. Why, it's lovely, Miss Mamie. Thank you. I never made anything so pretty before. Oh, you, you do like it. Yes. Y you never made anything like it before? Oh, no, 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 not like this. Y you see all the little ruffles? Well, surely you've made other party dresses. You must have. I always wanted to. I always hoped someone would... Oh, <laughs> but no one ever did. Uh, cocktail dresses? Evening dress? Oh, <laughs> my goodness, no. Never all these years. Uh, is, is something the matter, Mrs. Browning? Um, Miss Mamie. Oh, uh, did, did I keep you standing too Miss long? Miss Mamie, I want you to make Hallie's wedding dress. Uh, I, I thought you said make Miss Hallie's... Oh, no. No, no, you couldn't have. Yes, I did. I want you to make her wedding uh, dress. Would you... Uh, would you please say that again so I could be sure? I want you to make Hallie's wedding dress. Oh. From the beginning, all of it. The dress, the veil, the train. Uh, I'm going to make a wedding dress. Oh, no one ever trusted me with anything so fine. Oh, but but I'll sew like I have never sewed before. I will, Mrs. Browning. I promise I'm you. I'm sure you will. I trust you. Now, I'll bring the material and the pattern tomorrow morning. A wedding dress? A wedding dress? Grace, you didn't. Mother... Please, say you didn't. I can't say I didn't when I did. Oh, what in the name of heaven got into you? David, I don't know what got into me. I think it was just, just that pitiful little graduation dress. My pitiful wedding dress. Oh, honey, I am terribly sorry. I must have been out of my... Now, wait a minute. No, I am not sorry. I just can't be. If you had seen Miss Mamie's face... You always said even her hems look homemade. And now you let her make... Darling, my, listen. My... Now, just listen. I will see that she does it right. Now, there's plenty of time, a whole month. So she won't be hurried. I'll stay close to her. I'll watch every stitch. Nothing can possibly go wrong. Nothing except it'll look like a moo moo. Hallie, if everything isn't exactly right, if your dress isn't perfect, style, fit, everything, I promise we'll go to New York and buy any bridal gown you want. But I wanted the pattern I chose, the material I chose. Oh, I can see her cutting it. Snip, 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 and she'll ruin it. If she does ruin it, we'll find one just as beautiful as the one you planned. All right, darling. Hallie. All those years, nothing but hems to take up or let down. Seems to let out for people who get too fat or take in for the ones that get too thin. Sixty years of making up her fairy tales out of things like that. Now Miss Mamie will have a wedding dress. Oh, what a lovely dream she'll dream out of that. It's all right, Mother. The next morning, when I took the satin and tulle and lace to Miss Mamie... For the first time in living memory, the hodgepodge sewing room was neat and tidy. Everything had been cleared away for the wedding dress, and a sheet spread on the floor. When the material and pattern were laid on it, Miss Mamie kneeling to cut, she touched the satin with such tenderness. I could really have cried. It was as if she were in her garden, touching her flowers. Am I doing it all right? Why... <laughs> I needn't be here at all, Miss Mamie. No one could possibly do it better. I'm making a wedding dress, Mrs. Browning. I'm making a wedding dress. You certainly are. Now, would you like me to cut out the panels while you bake Don't the... Don't you touch it. Don't you dare touch it. Not any of it. I know what to do. I've always known. Don't you touch it. <laughs> Snip, 
Snip, snip. What a lovely dream Miss Mamie will make of a wedding dress, Hallie said. But dreams can become nightmares. And David said, her fantasy world is much better than any dream world could ever be. But is it? A mind confused can become possessed. Snip, snip, snip. What pattern other than a wedding gown will the scissors cut? We will soon begin to find out in Act Two. The afternoon of the day Miss Mamie cut out the wedding dress, David Browning arrived at her house to work on the portrait. He walked jauntily through the gate, down the plank path, up to the steps. But as he reached to ring the bell, he caught sight of something farther along the porch. Under a window, his folded easel, paint box, palette, and the unfinished portrait. Not crediting his eyes, he walked over to his possessions, staring down at them. At that moment, Miss Mamie appeared at the open window, mistily seen through yellowed lace curtains. She was holding white satin crushed against her. Miss Mamie! I, I, I was waiting for you. The portrait out here? I, I put everything out to save time. Save time? So you wouldn't have to come in. You see, there isn't any time to spare, Mr. Browning. There's only a month. There's only... What? The dress. A month to make the wedding dress. But you're saying that you don't want me to paint while you make the dress? You can't. Well, why not? You just said, and sew the way you always have. Oh, no, 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 please. I, I, I couldn't sew right. But I thought you liked sewing while I paint. You said you liked someone to talk but to. that was before. The wedding dress. Don't you understand? I'm making a wedding dress, Mr. Browning. I can't think about anything but the dress. Not pictures, not people, just the dress. Please, please try to understand. I think I do understand. Yes, I think I do. Grace, you've got to stop worrying. There's just no sense in it. I can't, and there is. Almost two weeks, and Miss Mamie's done nothing day and night but work on Hallie's dress. Turned down all other work. Sent back what was already ordered by other people, even Sue Wayne's graduation Well, dress. it's what Miss Mamie wants to do, so... What's there really to worry about when you and Hallie both keep saying the dress is perfect? The most delicate little stitches. It's so slow, so painstaking, and all by hand. I never dreamed she could sew like Well, I know, sweetheart. You keep telling me, but can't you see she's having the time of her life? Oh, but you haven't seen her lately. So thin, David. Under such a strain. If only she'd let me help her a little. I understand her fierce jealousy about it, but it's too much work for any one person, even somebody younger. Hey, maybe maybe she'd let Hallie help. Has Hallie ever asked? I don't think so. She's the bride. Miss Mamie would probably approve of a bride sewing a fine seam on her own wedding gown. Sew a button on her or something. Get Hallie to try. Remember what happened when I... Well... Yes. That's a good idea. Hallie went that same afternoon. She told me how she stood outside a moment looking at the flowers. At least Miss Mamie hadn't neglected her garden. Surely that was a good sign. Miss Mamie, I'd dearly love to make just a little of my own wedding dress. Last night on Long Distance, I talked about it with Jerry, and he thinks I should, too. Why don't I just take two of the panels home with me? Well, something's wrong. I I'm doing something wrong. Oh, no, no, nothing's wrong. It's perfect, all of it, everything. Oh, don't don't take the panels, Miss Hallie. Please don't take them. I I'll, I'll do them right. I wouldn't hurt them. You know I wouldn't hurt them. Please, please. I, I won't take them. I promise, I won't. But, but you said... You, you said... It was just a notion, not even a good one. We'll both forget all about it. Yes. Yes, we'll forget. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, and I... I have the loveliest idea, Miss Hallie. Early this morning, I was talking to my flowers, and they told me. They said, so little 
pearls on the wedding veil, like drops of dew on the lace. Pearls outlining the pattern on the lace. Oh, I think I'd like that very much. Mm -hmm. Tiny little seed pearls. I have some. They were mama's. Oh, Miss Mamie, I wish you'd come to my wedding. I mean, don't you want to see the dress in its right setting? The church and no promise me and, and the flowers. And my nice young man and I coming down the aisle. Why, well, of course I'll be at the wedding, Miss Hallie. Of course I will. Whatever made you think I wouldn't? Just like that, Miss Mamie changed her rule of a lifetime. She was going out in public. Another week passed, and another afternoon, Hallie and I returned home from a fitting. David took one look at us. Now what? You both got that I'm worried about Miss Mamie look. I just don't see how she can survive any more of this. Oh, now, Grace, not again, please. She is putting little seed pearls all over the veil, hundreds of them. Work enough for ten people. Now, Hallie just thought she meant a few pearls, but it's hundreds. And she will do it. Oh. Why did I ever tell her it was a good idea? It was and is a good idea. She thought of it. She loves it. She'll survive it. But she's tired. She's overworked and she looks... And she is happy. Remember that poem? John Donne, I think. Go and catch a falling star. How many of us catch a star? Miss Mamie has. But David, after this is over, then what? She's wearing herself out. She may not be able to sew anymore. Well, so what if she does have to retire? She saved some money. She told me so. Well, isn't Hallie's dress a beautiful climax to a life that's never been anything but drab? Do you think for one minute she wouldn't want that dress to have its wedding? Miss Manny had promised us the dress three days before the wedding. She was miraculously on schedule. The day came for the final fitting. The next day we would take the dress home. I went with Hallie and watched, both of us speechless, while she put the dress on. Miss Mamie fluttering and clucking. Hallie and I could only stare at what was reflected in the mirror. Speak? I couldn't. And finger to lips, I warned Hallie into silence. My daughter stood there and let Miss Mamie pin and tuck, murmur, and caress, and we said nothing. When the fitting was over... Now, up over your head, Miss Hallie. You careful, careful, careful. Don't hurt it. There. There. Now, I'll just go in the other room for tissue paper. I always lay it on tissue paper. I I'll only be a minute. Why wouldn't you let me say anything? Only what was the use? How could she? Why? Why? I don't know. I can't think. I'm sick. Oh, my dress. My beautiful dress is hideous. All that junk on it. Ruffles and sequins and fake flowers. And she's recut it. It doesn't even fit anymore. Why? Why would she ruin it like that? She didn't even notice that we said absolutely nothing while you tried it on. Oh, what are we going to do now? We're going to tell her that's what we're going to do. Well, no, 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 not yet, not yet. Well, there are only three days left. Three days, 30 days, it couldn't be fixed. Why tell her it's ruined and break her heart? It was so beautiful. I loved it so. Here she comes. Oh, did, did you like the little surprises? Weren't they lovely new things I thought of? I didn't go to bed last night, so they'd be finished for a surprise. Yes, uh, uh, they're marvelous, Miss Mamie. Oh, yes. There's never, ever in all the world been such a dress. No, there never has. Uh, Miss Hallie, have you still not decided what kind of flowers you carry? I thought I decided, but now I don't know. The dress. It's... I don't know. I've decided. Lilies. The dress would like lilies best. Lilies, Miss Hallie. Uh, uh, yes, Hallie, yes. Yes. All right. Lilies. <laughs> 
Oh, and, and Mrs. Browning, will you let me give my flowers to decorate the church? But, uh, Miss Mamie, you... You don't believe in cutting flowers. You said it was wicked. You said it hurt them. Yes, but this is different. Flowers love to be at weddings. Oh, please let me give them. I I've been tending them just like the dress. Please, please let me give them. Uh, thank you, Miss Mamie. We would love to have them. Thank you so much. Well, there's nothing to thank me for. It's why I've grown flowers all these years. So a wedding dress would... Ah, uh, the, the, the dress. Only one more day. One more. Tomorrow it's finished. You, you go now. You, you come tomorrow. Yes, yes, tomorrow. Uh, at, at uh, four o'clock. Everything will be ready at four o'clock. Yes. Goodbye, Miss Mamie. Goodbye, Miss Mamie. Well, she doesn't hear us. She's gone somewhere we can't go. Come, Hallie. We left Miss Mamie caressing the wedding dress, holding it against her cheek. We went out of the rusty screen door down the rotting steps, and we stood there. The flowers. Mm. Never so lovely. They are for a wedding. At least she didn't ruin the flowers. No. Only my dress. We were so worried about taking it away from her. Now she can have it forever. Darling, we will find a dress. Now, there's no time to have another one made, but time to go to New York and buy one just as beautiful. There isn't one as beautiful. There is, and we will find it. Only how do we tell Miss Mamie hers won't do? Now, no matter what she's done to it, she's worked so hard and she loved it so. I don't know how I can feel sorry for her, but I do. If she weren't coming to the wedding, we wouldn't have to tell her. But she is coming. Mm. What? Why don't we say... Uh, you decided to wear a suit, a white silk suit. That way we wouldn't have to criticize the dress. Then I'd have to wear a suit. And I won't. I just won't. My dress is ruined and I won't have my wedding ruined right. too. All right, now, you're right. Of course, a suit won't do. W would the best way be not to tell Miss Mamie at all? We, uh, take the dress home tomorrow? Uh, pay her, thank her, let her be happy and proud as long as she can? Happy for three more days. Go and catch a falling star. She caught a star. But when she held it in her hands, she tarnished it. We always thought her fairy tales were harmless little games. They weren't games. She's not right in her head. And now she's on the edge of... Um... Yes. She is. Her eyes, did you notice? They glittered like the sequins on my dress. No matter what we do about the dress, her heart will break. And will it... Will we push her over the edge? What happens when fantasy becomes the only reality? When the real world does not exist at all in a mind gone astray. That look in Miss Mamie's eyes, stardust. If the stardust is cleared away and she is forced to see fact, not fancy, will she indeed be pushed over the edge of the precipice into madness? The answer to that question waits in Act Three. it was the poet John Donne who wrote Go and Catch a Falling Star followed by the lines Tell me where all past years are or who cleft the devil's foot and we are reminded of Miss Mamie's lost years 
Then we're constrained to ask if the devil is indeed part of what may come to pass when satin and lace and tulle are pronounced unacceptable. Grace and Hallie Browning had no solution for the problem of a blighted wedding gown. But David Browning had not the slightest doubt what should be done, and said so. She has to be told. You'll go there tomorrow and you'll tell her Hallie can't wear the dress. David, how can we? How can we tell her it's ugly? Tell no, her no, 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 no. We'll think of some excuse. What possible excuse will make up for what we're doing to her? That dress is her life. The only thing in the world that matters well, to her. Well, just the same, you'll tell her. Daddy, if you think it's so easy, you tell her. I didn't say it was easy. I said she had to be told. If she's not, more than a dress will be ruined. The wedding, she'll sit in that church waiting for the dress, her dress, to come down the aisle and... And when it doesn't, there's no telling what that dear old lady will do. Are you willing to take that chance? Oh, David. She'll cry. She'll make some terrible scene. She'll... Now, now, stop it, Hallie. Now, listen to me. You're both worried because you'd have to take the dress away from her. Now, you won't have to. It's hers now. You give it to her, and without telling her, it's spoiled. David, you keep saying what we're to do, but you don't say how. Just how do we explain why we're giving it to her? Well, we we'll say Hallie changed her mind about the style of dress she wants. Well, what's the matter with that? Hasn't a bride the right to change her mind? I won't wear a suit. Mother had that idea. I won't. No, not a suit, not a suit. Just, just a style. Make a speech about how you fall in love with... Well, say, Ampere style. Ugh, I hate Ampere. Well, I don't care what style you say. It doesn't matter. J just one not like the wedding dress. At the very last minute. You mean the bride changes her mind? Yes, at the very last minute, because it is the very last minute. Don't try to make it all sound logical. Grace, it isn't. It can't be. Wait. But I thought of something else. Hallie. You tell her Jerry has fallen in love with that other style, too. Say, uh, I have to wear what Jerry wants me to wear. Say that. You can even say, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell her Jerry himself bought the dress he's so crazy about. Well, that is ridiculous. A groom doesn't buy a bride's dress. Miss Mamie won't realize it's ridiculous. What does she know about what grooms do or don't do? It, uh... <sighs> All right. Jerry. Yes, we'll put all the blame on him. That's good, David. That, that, that's exactly what we'll say. It isn't good. It's rotten. She'll know we don't like the dress no matter what lies we tell. She'll sense it. She does sense things, you know. She does. It's true, she does. Daddy, will you come along? Give us courage. Help us tell all those lies. Uh, well, do. I'll be right with you. <gasps> Listen. I've thought of something. You can act like you're mad at Jerry. Make one of your awful speeches about that young upstart. Yes. <laughs> yeah, sure. that's a good idea. Miss Mamie, I can tell you now, if I had my way, I'd call off this wedding. <sighs> it's plain to me that this Jerry Wallace is an overbearing young tyrant and very likely will ruin my daughter's life. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> All right, we're making progress. Yes, yes, we are. Oh, Hallie, that was a brilliant idea. I'm so glad you thought of it. Oh, my poor Jerry. Villain of the piece. Your poor Jerry is a hero. He's saving the day. Yes, the whole charade will work out fine. I wish I could be sure of that. I can't. Any more than you two can. I'm only sure that we've got to tell her. David was right. We couldn't be certain the tangled plan would work, but we had to do what we had to do. The next afternoon, the three of us walked slowly to Miss Mamie's, wanting to put off the ordeal as long as we could. When our reluctant steps reached her gate, we stopped. We stared. We couldn't believe our eyes. Oh, what an earth has she done? David. I don't believe this. She didn't. She couldn't. Oh, her flowers. She's picked them all. We'll all be wilted. The wedding is three days off. What was she thinking of? 
She couldn't have forgotten the date. It's the only date she ever paid any attention to. The only dress she ever finished on time. Daddy, what does this mean? Well, she she's mixed up, obviously. She's lost track of time. That, that's what it is. has to be. Uh, now. Now it's all worse than ever. It meant so much to her to have her cherished flowers decorating the church. Old, wilted flowers. Is that what I'm to have at my wedding? Oh, no, sweetheart. No, no. As if the dress isn't enough now, what do we say to her about the flowers? We can't blame them on Jerry. We thank her and take them home. And then we buy the same kind for the wedding. They, They won't be exactly the same, but... She's so mixed up, she won't know the difference. She won't, Hallie. All right. All right. Now, we're going in there and make her believe every word we say. Oh, Lord, I pray so. Come on. Let's get it over. We went in the front door. Miss Mamie had told us never to bother to ring. We walked down the dark hall and turned into the parlor... Once again, we stared. The room was a bower, a garden, everywhere beautiful flowers. Great vases of them on tables, windowsills, on the floor. Clusters behind pictures, nosegays pinned to the curtains. Cascades of ribbons falling from the chandelier. The mantle marvelously arrayed. And Miss Mamie, nowhere to be seen. What does it mean? Why on earth has she done this? What is it for? Daddy? I don't know why. Now, wait. Wait, I think I do know. It's a... It's a pathetic celebration. Because the wedding dress is finished. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of art exhibit. The talented artist displaying her flowers... A dress. I think it's all in honor of the dress. Remember, Hallie, she said everything would be ready at four, not just the dress, everything? Everything meant all this, too. And everything gets worse and worse and worse. Now what do we do? Now, darling, don't, don't cry. Now, please don't cry. But, Mother, she did want her flowers in the church, so why did she use them all in her house? All of them. She could have left some outside. She could have divided she them. She could have, but she didn't. But I don't Hallie, see... Hallie, Hallie, dear, don't try to understand. It can't be done. No, it can't. We'll just tell her they're beautiful. Where on earth is she? Well, find her. Just find her. I can't stand any more of this. I want to get it over with and get out of here. Yes, so do I. Miss Mamie? Miss Mamie? Maybe she's ill. Maybe she... (sighs) She was there. Miss Mamie, standing in the archway, smiling. She was wearing the veil and the wedding dress. Its satin train spread like a great white flower about her feet. In her arms, Lily's. Almost, she looked young, serene, happy, radiant. A bride. Welcome. Welcome to my dear friends. Miss Mamie. Please, sit down with the rest of the guests. The minister will be here very soon. And so will Martin... So will the bridegroom. Miss Mamie. Oh, no. No, Mr. Browning. I'm so sorry, but I daren't stay here and talk. Martin mustn't see his bride before the ceremony. It's very bad luck. I'll go now and wait in the next room. He'll be here soon. My beloved will be here soon. Oh, my. No, 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 Grace. No, no, Hallie, Hallie, Hallie. It isn't sad. It isn't tragic. Oh, David, how can you say that? It's pitiful. It's terrible. No. Not if you see with Miss Mamie's eyes. 
Don't you see she's lived a whole life while she made the wedding dress? A life she never had? While she sewed, she was a... She was a young girl. Courted and loved. Proposed to and promised. And now at last, after waiting so long... She's a bride. She really did catch a falling star and kept it untarnished. Another line in John Donne's poem is this. Such a pilgrimage was sweet. Miss Mamie was quite mad. Yes. Lost in fantasy, yes. But happier than you and I will ever be. A sweet pilgrimage. No one could ever take her star from her. No one ever tried. And until the day of her death, a few months later, she believed she had married Martin. I'll be back shortly. Would you like to know what happened at Hallie's wedding? Yes, Miss Mamie was there. But when the bride came down the aisle wearing a gown bought in New York, Miss Mamie made no scene at all. For in her clouded mind, the original dress was hers. In it, she had been married to Martin. Until her death, the Brownings took care of her in their own home. And after Hallie's wedding, her father liked to say, I lost a daughter, but I gained Martin and Miss Mamie. Our cast included Carol Titel, Ralph Bell, Terry Keene, and Kathleen Quinlan. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. President Carter scores congressional attempts to restrict gasoline rationing authority. I'm David Jackson reporting on the CBS radio network. At his White House news conference Wednesday night, Mr. Carter was asked about the rationing plan that's now in the House. A few hours before, Republicans managed to amend the bill, requiring that the president submit to Congress a detailed plan 30 days before he intends to implement it. The amendment would also give Congress two chances to veto the idea. All that prompted House leaders to pull the bill off the floor and may delay passage until this fall. Said Mr. Carter of the developments, they illustrate the timidity of Congress in dealing with a sensitive political issue. I criticized the House when they failed to pass a rationing plan a few months ago. The House leadership has now promised me that an adequate rationing standby plan would be passed. I don't object to the one-house veto if it's done expeditiously. I think only 15 days would elapse. What I do object are the other restraints that have been placed on the evolution of a standby gasoline rationing plan. Mr. Carter also sought to rally public support for his windfall oil profits tax, saying the big oil lobby will try to gut it in the Senate, and without a stiff tax, he says, his energy independence goals cannot be met. On presidential politics, Mr. Carter was asked about Senator Henry Jackson's prediction that he, the president, will step aside in 1980 and that Edward Kennedy will be the Democratic nominee. Three or four years ago, I was running uh, for president against Senator Jackson. At that time, he predicted that he would be the next president beginning in 1977. His judgment was not very good then. And now I'm ready for the next question. Now this. Picture this. Choppers are bringing in the casualties. Trapper John McIntyre, head of surgery, and Dr. Gonzo Gates are fighting to save lives. There's the bleeder. Can you reach it? 
got it. It's the same Trapper John who served with a MASH unit in Korea. Gonzo was in Vietnam. Today, they're keeping the spirit of MASH alive at San Francisco Metropolitan Hospital. Burnell Roberts is Trapper John, M.D. Coming this fall on CBS Television. Got the picture? Oh, yeah, you're looking good. Nicaragua's ruling junta says that country's economy is bankrupt and moves to correct the problem. George Natanson reports from Managua. The National Reconstruction Government has decreed the nationalization of all Nicaraguan private banks at the same time that it assured investors of indemnization. Investors in the private banks will be paid off in government bonds of five years maturity. Under the decree, all foreign banks with branches in Nicaragua will be permitted to continue their operations but will not be allowed, among other things, to accept local deposits. The Reconstruction Junta declared that the nationalization of the financial institutions was necessary as practically all private banks were found to be bankrupt as the result of 45 days of internal war that also wrecked the country's economy. The Junta stressed that although the nation's banks were nationalized, private property will be respected and that nationalization in itself would not become policy. George Nathanson for CBS News in Managua. Deputies in California late Wednesday recaptured American Indian activist Leonard Peltier about 30 miles north of the Lompoc Federal Prison from which he escaped last Friday night. He's serving a life term for killing two FBI agents in 75. The hunt continues for any accomplices he may have had in his escape. United Airlines now says a wing engine on one of its DC-10s failed in flight and that that prompted the pilot to make an emergency landing in Cleveland Wednesday. It was Flight 4 from Los Angeles to Newark, New Jersey, with 172 passengers aboard. No one was hurt. Earlier, airline officials said the engine had begun vibrating excessively.